Now, what if you are not interested in the percentage of G and the percentage of C, but you specifically want to look for the pattern CG, which is something that you would do if you wanted to find CPG islands in your promoters. Yeah? You're not looking at G and C separately, but you're looking at the combination of C, G. There are also functions for that. So function that you can use to calculate the frequency of a pattern is called the V-count pattern function. It works more or less the same. So you have to tell him which string set you want to work on. You have to tell him the pattern that you want to search. He will calculate the, the count, yeah? the total number of occurrences of CG in the promoter of each of the genes. And then you're going to divide that by the total length of each promoter to transform the count, because this generates a count, to transform this count into a frequency. That's when I run this line of code. He generates, again, a matrix with the frequency of the CG pattern in each of the human promoter sequences. This is a matrix we want to plot. So again, we're going to transform this into a data frame because ggplot wants a data frame. So now it's a data frame. You can see that here. Let's take a look at the names of the columns. And you see here that there's no or sign in the column name. So I can just leave it as it is. And then I can create a histogram. In the same way that we have done before. But this time the histogram will show us the frequency of the combination CG. So literally the pattern CG in the list of human promoters. The previous time we were looking at the combined frequency of C and G individually. So that's something different. And this is why these frequencies are much lower now, because we're literally looking at the pattern CG, which occurs obviously less than the individual letters C and G. So the V count pattern function allows you to calculate the count, yeah, the number of times that one certain pattern occurs in DNA string or a DNA string set. If you want to calculate the number of occurrences for each possible base dimer in these sequences, then you end up with a different function. You end up with this function, the oligonucleotide frequency function. It works on strings and on string sets. You have to tell him the K here. And so it's going to calculate how many times each k mer occurs in a sequence or in a set of sequences. And you have to tell him whether you want to look at dimers or trimers or even a higher k. Yeah, so we are going to look at dimers. And simplify.as, this argument specifies how to show the results. So we want a simple representation of the results. So we're going to use collapse here. So when I run this line of code, he will show you the count, how many times each of these dimers occurs in the set of human promoter sequences.